Recently, we had to find a new tenant for our unit because our original tenant, who has lived here since we took possession two and a half years ago, has bought his own place and decided to move on and start the next chapter in his life. I wanted to shoot a video to document the entire process and some of the lessons I have learned so that whether you are a landlord who is renting out a place or a renter who is looking for his or her new place, can benefit from the experience as well as some of the lessons I've learned along the way. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Dennis, and in my channel, I share my lessons learned, tips, and insights gained in life as a past immigrant. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. To give you some perspective, the unit is a high-rise building. It has four amenities, including 24-hour concierge services, an outdoor pool, an indoor gym, indoor hot pool, sauna room, steam room, meeting room, party room, as well as a pay-to-use theater room, spacious underground parking, as well as a large locker storage room. From a marketing and promotional perspective, once we received the notice from our previous tenant, what I did is to start posting my ads in three different places, Craigslist, Kijiji, and Facebook. The total span of the process lasted 18 days, but truthfully, I already found a suitable candidate after 14 days. Below, I wanted to give you a quick debrief on the effectiveness of the three platforms I used, how much they cost, and what the results were. For Facebook Marketplace, not only was it free, but it generated 1739 views before I market as unavailable. That's right, you heard it. It's 1700 plus views, and it generated 75.4% of the total inquiries I received, or 92 messages. For Kijiji, it actually cost me $15.65 and only generated 12 inquiries, or 9.8% of the response rates. Additionally, it's been a while since I last used Kijiji, but since the last time I used it, I think free ad postings are limited now to two for categories such as property rentals. For the apartment rental ad I created, I had two free ad creations before I had to pay a listing fee of a whopping $29.95. Also, something to note that the user interface of Kijiji was slightly more user-friendly than Craigslist. Lastly, for the old Craigslist, it was free and it generated 14.75% of the inquiries or a total of 18 messages. Obviously, having gone through this experience, if I ever had to find a new tenant again, my preference will be as follows now. Facebook, Craigslist, and Kijiji. Now, let's talk a bit about my criteria for finding the right tenant and how to gauge people who express interest to see if they are the right fit. In my experience, I received a total of 122 inquiries in the span of 18 days. I had lots of messages, phone calls, and text messages to reply to. So you can imagine the limited attention I have for each individual who expressed their interest. Especially, all they message me is, hey, I'm interested in your unit. Can I please schedule a viewing? Without proper context, then I have to send follow-up questions that leads to a lengthy back and forth discussion. So my recommendation for those of you who are watching this video and wanted to rent your next place is as follows. If you were serious about a particular place, be sure to at least briefly describe your situation. For instance, what do you do for work? How many people will be living with you in the unit? Do you smoke, drink, or own any paths or multiple vehicles. This information should serve as the bare minimum to get the ball rolling. Additionally, depending on which platform you are using, like you came across the rental ad, I think Facebook marketing has a little bit more social proof. It adds a little bit more credibility just because at least you have some information about the person that has posted the ad. Unlike Craigslist or Kijiji, you literally have no idea who you are talking to until you have a chance to start a conversation with them. A lot of the times, you don't even have any idea who you'll be talking and dealing with until you have a chance to basically meet them face to face. For the viewings, once you have passed through the initial back and forth messaging and you actually schedule a viewing, be sure to respect each other's time. 
I have had a number of individuals who arrange a viewing with me but end up ghosting me. Basically, we agreed on a date and time to meet and they did not even end up showing up nor did they have the courtesy of telling me in advance. Before I move on to the next tip, be sure to comment down below, like this video and subscribe to my channel if you find today's video helpful. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Now let's talk about some recommendations I have for people who have a place to rent and are looking for their next tenant. My first recommendation is this. Be sure to ask for a phone number as well as some high level personal information um, before you schedule a viewing. I stopped responding to people who did not even have the courtesy of providing their basic personal information. Oftentimes it goes like this. We'll often go back and forth depending on which platform we use and how responsive the other party is. And once a viewing has been arranged, I will ask for their phone number as the last step to provide the actual address information or the instruction on how we should meet. Additionally, if applicable, I will always message the other party just a few hours or even a day before the actual viewing. So I don't have to drive 30 minutes for nothing only to get ghosted. And once I started asking people for their personal information as well as their phone number, um, I no longer get ghosted. And so this is something I would encourage you to do as well. Getting their phone numbers as the last step to finalize a viewing and book it on the calendar. Secondly, I think 45 minutes is a good slot to show people around, especially in a high rise, and gauge their interest. Because I had a tenant still living here while I was arranging the viewings, I had to walk around his scheduler. So that made things a little bit trickier. 45 minutes is more than enough time to show the individual this unit as well as all the amenities associated with this unit and still having some time for Q and A at the end of the session. Like I mentioned, I had a tenant living in this place while I was arranging the showings. So what I did is I arranged up to four back to back to back to back viewings for 45 minutes just so I can maximize my presence here. Uh, each time I have to drive over for 30 minutes. Now, this is something that can definitely get a little bit intense. So as a alternative, what you can do is to make a, a quick YouTube video, walk around the units as if you're showing a relative or a friend about your place. Uh, you know, upload the whole video to YouTube as an unlisted video uh, on YouTube so you can just share the link with those people who are interested and that will save a little bit of time as well. Thirdly, if you are interested to move forward with the individual, make sure you send them the rental application form as soon as possible. Here in British Columbia, we have a form readily available and I will post a link to it below. But depending on where you are from, obviously there will be different rules processes and regulations involved when it comes to renting a place. This form though is generic enough that like you should be able to use in most places as the bare minimum. But anyways, be sure to get the poll rolling as soon as possible so that you have multiple candidates to choose from at the end of the day when you're making the decision. And similarly, if you are a tenant looking for a new place, don't put all your eggs in the same basket. Be sure to have a plan B, especially if you are in an urgent situation where you have to find a new place. Fourthly, be sure to know your rights and the local rules for tenancy agreements. I like to play by the rules and I tell everyone who is interested in my unit, I like to play by the rules. And I encourage the interested parties to get familiarized with the local regulations, rules and processes involved in a new tenancy. For instance, I clearly outline and explain all the steps required to move things forward for the rental application the forms that will be signing. And for payment arrangements, I have a very strong preference for post-dated checks as opposed to electronic transfers. Just because I don't even like the notion that I have to chase you for the rent money. And conventional thinking is that when your check bounces, it has more impact to your financial standing than say you just forgot to transfer your funds electronically for a day or two. Fifth, be sure to validate all your references provided by the interested party. I have rejected candidates who everything looks good on paper, but when I actually called their ex-landlord, I did not have a good feeling about it, and that's why I had to reject their application. Make sure you have a chance to obtain a letter of employment from the person who has expressed interest 
in renting your place. And be sure to have a chance to speak with their direct supervisor or manager. There are a few questions that I like to ask when I have a chance to speak with their manager or supervisor. First, is the individual in good performance rating on the team or has he or she received any performance improvement plans? Second, has the individual ever expressed any aggression or lost his cool while at work? Finally, hypothetically, if the manager or supervisor in question had a place for the applicant to rent, would he or she have enough confidence in trusting the applicant to be a good tenant? Meaning, if you have a place, will you rent the place to the applicants? So there you have it. If you find today's video helpful, be sure to comment down below, give me a like, and subscribe to my channel. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and help a small channel like mine to grow. Until next time, take care, and I will see you in the next video.